Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Uh, this is an American Abroad episode number two. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say shout out to every single person who liked, watched, commented, subscribed off that video. The support was unreal, so thank you guys very, very much for keeping it a stack and for enjoying something that I just kind of took a risk on. For today's episode, we're going to be talking about why it is that I decided to move to France. I'm currently on the way right now to the beach. I'm like an hour and a half late. I was supposed to meet some of the homies there that I actually met in the first video. Uh, so yeah, that wasn't just for the video, dude. That was, these, those are like my legit homies now. They're texting me, waiting on me to go play some volleyball. So uh, we're gonna make our way right over there. I really can't see the full fit right now, but I straight up look like a schoolboy, bro. Look at this fit. Hold the what? <laughs> that ass looking like I'm in the Caillou movie, bro. The Caillou film. The sun is hitting right now, it's hitting different. One thing that I found out today was that Bologna has, uh, I think, some of the longest days in all of France, especially when it comes to like the month of like June and July. Uh, the days here are the longest just because of how north it is. Um, so, for example, where I'm from in Massachusetts and Boston, not Boston, but like Worcester, uh, this the day gets dark at like eight o'clock, but here it gets dark at like 10:30, which is very rare, honestly, because not a lot of sunlight kind of happens where we are um but in reverse as well there's not really a lot of sunlight when it comes to like the winter and stuff so it's kind of weird so a lot of people have been asking me how is it that i'm in france right in the 11 days that i've been living here i've received almost countless requests as to how it is that i've been living here right because a lot of people have the preconceived notion that when you travel it's expensive that isn't always the case. Depending on how you travel, it can be expensive or it can be actually very, very affordable. Like there's some people who think that they need 10 grand to backpack Europe. Like you don't need 10 grand to backpack Europe. If you spend like a month, you could literally get it done with like two or three Gs. Granted, you're not gonna be sleeping in hotels, you're gonna be sleeping in hostels, you're gonna be sleeping like in a room with like other people probably. But if you really are about the traveling life, then that isn't gonna matter to you because you just wanna see new places, you wanna experience new things. Kinda like how these pigeons are. Number one, what I wanted to get accomplished was I wanted to find a way to, to travel. I wanted to find a way to see new places, experience new cultures, learn new languages, right? And the most cost-effective way for me to do that was by finding an opportunity that allowed me, bonjour, was by finding an opportunity which allowed me to do those three things by not having to spend so much of my own money. Now, I myself, I don't have boatloads of cash, <laughs> okay? <laughs> yeah, whatever that guy said. <laughs> See, I myself, I don't have boatloads of cash. This year that I'm gonna be spending here in France and in Europe in general, like, I'm going to try and do it while trying to break even. Be in the video? No, no? you guys wanna say hi? <laughs> cool, cool. So, um, so yeah, just uh, just some future potential fans, but we'll see. You gotta take like actionable steps to actually try and get yourself over to a foreign country. It's not as easy as just booking the plane ticket. In fact, booking the. Alright, well, there's that. Um, <laughs> it's not as easy as just literally booking a plane ticket and coming here. A lot of countries have regulations and restrictions, right? And they won't allow you to visit for longer than three months unless you have a valid visa. For myself, I got the au pair visa. It wasn't my initial first choice. My first choice was actually to work for the French government as an English assistant teacher for this program called TAPIF. And to get accepted into that program, I literally had to take a 200 hour certification course in English. And then after that, I had to apply for the program. But before I applied for the program, I had to teach myself French. And that took like six, seven months. And then I had to apply for a program and then I had to wait. So it was a whole process. After you get accepted into your visa, um, then you have to try and find a family to host you. Concept which is pretty foreign to people in the United States, but in Europe, because there's so many different countries, right, in one small strip of land, at least like 45 plus different countries in Europe with different languages and stuff, it's very common for people in Europe to host people from other countries just so that they could do language exchanges. This concept is foreign to people in the US, but to people in Europe, it's very common. So if you're actually looking to au pair in Europe as an American, it's quite easy. 
but you know, for people of other countries, it might be a little bit more difficult. Just because being accepted for a visa, honestly, even though it's really bullshit, it kind of just depends on like your nationality, really. Like your nationality really does play a big, big part in it. You get accepted for a visa, um, and you find a family to host you, then you can really start setting yourself up to make the move over here. I myself was in contact with my host family for like a couple of months before I finally decided to like pull the trigger. There's like maybe like 70 families that I sent messages to who straight up denied me. Um, so like you're gonna get a, you're gonna have to get used to the rejection process the, or the words no sorry no thank you right you're gonna have to get used to that because at the end of the day when somebody is hosting you into their house when somebody's hosting you to their family they're keeping you around their family they're keeping you around their kids for you know the next three six nine month period so it is honestly a big investment it is honestly like a big security risk which is why like woo! <laughs> Yeah, like I was saying, it, it is a big risk for a family to take somebody in who they don't know besides on the phone and stuff. So that's why it's important for people to have a lot, a lot of trust with the family that they're being hosted by, for the family that's hosting them. You know what I mean? You gotta really honestly do a whole bunch of research and who knows, like the methods that I'm sharing with you in this video might not be the only way for you to get to France or Europe or, or another, your, another country in general. You know what I mean? There's always there's always programs, there's always applications that you can do. It really just kind of comes down to the amount of research you're willing to do and the amount of no's you're willing to eat before you actually get a yes. Because I didn't get many yeses. This was literally like one of my first yeses and then I just went. I think I first met my host family and I, I matched with them on a website called opairworld.com. It's a free website. Uh, basically what you do is you create a profile and then after you create a profile you like put the pictures in of yourself You say like why it is that you want to be an au pair. You say like what it is that you want to do um, What do you hope to get out of your year? How long you want to stay there for? What your experiences this that and the third right just basic job application stuff because at the end of the day It is a job and then you really just got to keep like sifting through family so for example like for myself I didn't really have much of a priority and I'm giving this as an advice, but it is what it is, right? My priority was to really just get to France. Like, I just wanted to get to France. I just wanted to learn a new language. I just wanted to learn a new culture. And that was that. However, um, if I could have a do-over, it would mainly, it would be like, figure out where you want to go. France itself is a very, very big country. One of the biggest in Europe, actually. So, um, saying like you just want to go to France isn't really sufficient enough, right? How are you as a person? Do you like the sun a lot? Do you like the beach? Uh, do you like uh, a certain type of cuisine? So all these different factors really kind of play a decision, play a big part into you making the right decision for yourself. I don't regret where I am right now. I mean, at least not yet. It's only been 12 days <laughs> since I've been here in France. I would have loved to be in the south of France, like the Côte d'Azur. Um, the, uh, the French Riviera, as we say in the United States. And uh, I would have loved to be there. Why? Beautiful sun, beautiful beaches. There's actually people, a lot of Arab speaking people there. Um, I love the culture of uh, Marseille. Marseille. Um, so like, I would have loved to be down there. However, like I received a beautiful opportunity with the family here in the North. And obviously sometimes you're gonna have to compromise on what it is that you want and what it is that you can get. As for the logistics of being an au pair, it really just kind of depends on the family that you're working with. For myself, um, it's basically like taking care of their children, but like taking care of their children isn't as black and white as a lot of people think it is. They have a child that just turned 11 today, uh, just turned 12, sorry, and they have another child who's gonna turn 10 very soon, and they have a child who's one years old. For me, what I have done so far is basically like accompany the kids to school, bring them back, take the kids to practice. It hasn't been anything like way, way, way too serious. Um, I have had to watch like the one-year-old for probably like six or seven hours this past week, but it's nothing crazy, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I did have to change the diaper too. I did have to make him some bottles and like put him to sleep and just kind of occupy him and stuff. But for me, it's honestly a small price to pay because I'm so fascinated by other cultures and other languages and other uh, just other countries and other people in general that I'm willing to put up with like a few diapers <laughs> and like no monthly expenses just to just to do it. You know what I mean? Just to experience that reality. So I think that's pretty sufficient for uh, 
how it is that I'm here in France. If you guys have any questions about what it's like to be an au pair, what your experiences are, or if you want me to make like a video series about my one month experience, three month experience, six month, one year, stuff like that, I could definitely do it. Just let me know in the comments. In terms of why it is that I chose France and why am I here? Well, so I grew up uh, in the United States and I was born in Boston, but then I lived when I was really young in New York, in Brooklyn specifically, right? There's multiple cultures there. It's such a, uh, a culturally dense area. And ever since I was a little child, I've always heard languages being spoken and stuff. I didn't really know it was a big passion of mine until like the pandemic really when I had so much stuff on my hands. And I always told myself, you know what, I really do want to learn another language, but not to the extent where other people say it. So I decided to do it. So I started off with French because I wanted to, my goal in being able to speak multiple languages is to be able to communicate with as many people as I possibly can. So um, I chose the language which would allow me to communicate with the most people on the most continents. Um, and that obvious choice for me was French. So French is actually the language that's spoken on five different continents. Granted, it sounds different for every single continent and for every single city that they speak French. Uh, for example, I'm in Bologna right now, but in Paris it sounds so much different. In the south it sounds so much different. But nonetheless, it's French. So it's a very good way for me to communicate with people um, as an introductory language. And also, because I speak English and because I speak Arabic, uh, French comes a little bit easier to me. That's basically why it is that I chose French. Um, as to why it is that I chose France, well, if you're going to learn a language, it's best, in my opinion, I think, to learn it from the mother land so that's why like the obvious choice for me in my head was just to go to France so that's why it is that I came here uh, as to where it is that I wanted to go in France I wanted to go to the south because I love the sun I love the water and I just love like culturally dense areas because discovering other people's culture discovering other people's interests and like ways of life is something which probably makes me the happiest person that I could possibly be and it's my firm belief it's my firm opinion that when you are at the happiest that you can be, the world is the place. Came to France, number one, I wanted to increase my French speaking ability to the best that I possibly can. While I was living in the United States, and while I taught myself French over the past six or seven months as an experiment, my French kind of plateaued, not necessarily because I was living in the United States, but because of the amount of interactions that I was having with the language. I think in French, it kind of works like how it works with Spanish, where, for example, like if you know how to communicate with the people if you understand like the mainland version of the language, then you can just understand all the other derivatives of the language. Here at the same beach that I met my homies at last time, um, they were actually bugging on me because I was supposed to be here like an hour and a half ago, but nonetheless, I'm here now. We're gonna get Volley in. These boys are not ready, man. First time, you know what I mean? I was just kind of warming up. The second time though, I'm, uh, I'm ready now. Oh, these actually might not be the same people. Or they actually might be, I don't know. Either way, I'll make friends. Wish the gars! Comment tu fais-tu? Ouais, non, ton nom. Ton prénom, c'est quoi ton nom? Ah, Ziad. Ziad, ok. <laughs> cool, cool. Man, start as a YouTuber, I'm dead. Maxime! Maxime! Ça va Oui, vas-y, Joe. Ah On s'est fait, fait déconcentrer par Yus. Je <rire> veux repartir, mec. C'est mon bon message, ouais. Go to ouais. travel US. Go, go, go to travel to the US. <rire> hey, the boy. Bang, bang. <rire> tu as dit quoi son, Avec son... Euh, euh, cassé la caméra. Oh, non, 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 non c'est la... pas cassé. Parce que... Euh, c'est cette petite chose, elle fait, fait trop bien. Elle fait de bruit. De, de bruit. Ça, ouais. il peut le porter avec son anus. <rire> je, sais, je sais, elle aime bien ça. C'est quoi ça yes. Ma mère regarde le vidéo. Ta mère, elle regarde les vidéos Ouais. C'est pas grave. Elle... Dis pas bonjour. Grave. Ouais, je, suis désolé, je suis désolé, maman. Une actine, une maman. Oh my god, oh my god. Ah, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take care of his ass later. Pause. Pause. Hello guys, come to our new video here in uh, the volleyball. We're here to guys. Yeah. Hey! Vas-y, allez, allez.
<rire> Coupez le vidéo. On a besoin d'un joueur. On est. Ils sont en 5-5, les mecs. Ils ont un Ouh, bien joué, ce. Best player in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Shut it off. <laughs> this man is Remy. <laughs> National Coupe de France. <laughs> and we are back in my room. All right, boys, that is going to wrap it up for episode number two of An American Abroad. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. It was more so an educational one as to how it is that I'm here why it is that i'm here if you guys enjoyed the video i'm gonna be back with episode number three in the next couple of days you guys are gonna absolutely love that one peace and love i'll see you guys on the next one